Okay, welcome back. Uh, this is 2.3 techniques for computing limits. Um, these next two limits kind of require a lot of work, so I want to do another video for these uh, separate. So um, the other techniques that you'll see is living, limits involving conjugates. Okay, so in this type of limit, it looks kind of crazy. You just got a lot of stuff going on. You got a, a rational function with a with a square root underneath, and it's just kind of messy. Okay, but you know, it's just a limit. We have this function. Uh, the first thing that we want to do is we want to just do direct substitution and plug in 1 and see what we get. Okay, so I'm going to plug in 1 minus 1 up top divided by the square root of 4 times 1 plus 5 uh, minus 3. Okay, and so we get 0 up top all divided by 4 plus 5 is 9, so the square root of 9 minus 3 and so then we get 0 over 3 minus 3, which ends up giving us 0 over 0. Okay, so this is indeterminate. We are unable to determine what this is. Okay, so indeterminate. Indeter. Okay. And so with this, when you've got something like this, that's where you're that's where you gotta go, okay, let me try something else. Let me try and manipulate this algebraically. Okay. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and erase this real quick. Uh, go back and pause and rewind if you want to write that down. But I'm going to continue writing this uh, to make it nice and neat. Um, so when I've got something like this, now notice that it's, I, I said it before, it was a fraction with a square root down below. Okay, and I don't really know anything currently. I mean, I, we know, but I, I don't recognize it. It looks kind of bad. You're like, okay, how do I manipulate this and turn it into something where I can, you know, simplify this? And so the thing that you got to realize is you got a square root down here minus a number, okay? And I can make a conjugate out of that. So if I multiply the top and bottom by the conjugate of my denominator, I'm going to get the square root of 4x plus 5 plus 3. And up top, I'm going to get the square root of 4x plus 5 and then plus 3, okay? So... Let's let's kind of write this out. This is kind of a heavy on the algebra, but I'm going to get the limit as x approaches 1 of x minus 1 times the quantity, the square root of 4x plus 5 plus 3. And I'm not going to multiply this out. I'm not going to FOIL it, but I do want to FOIL the bottom, okay? And so when I FOIL the bottom, you got to remember what conjugates do. Okay, conjugates do that thing where if you've got a plus b times a minus c, and if you multiply, I'm sorry, a minus b, and if you multiply this out, this, is, this gives you the difference of squares, okay, and you get a squared minus b squared, all right? So I could multiply this all this out, or I could use this formula here that we know, and I'm going to get this. I'm going to get the quantity, the square root of 4x plus 5, quantity squared minus 3 squared, which is 9, okay? Let me simplify this. Let's simplify this and see what we get here, okay? So if I have the limit as x approaches 1 of my numerator, which is x minus 1 times the quantity of the square root of 4x plus 5 and then plus 3, and then all divided by, okay, the square root and the square, that just those just go away. All right, so you end up getting 4x plus 5 minus 9. Okay, so now we can combine like terms here, all right? And so we can get this. We get the limit as x approaches 1 of x minus 1 times the quantity uh, 4x plus 5 and plus 3. Okay, this gives us uh, 4x uh, and then minus 4. Okay, so we get 4x minus 4. All right, so now, at this point, all right, what can we do here? I'm not seeing anything. Uh, oh, I could, oh, gosh, guys, look, I could factor out a 4 out of my denominator. All right, let's give that a shot. Let's see what that does. So I have the limit as x approaches 1 of the quantity, x minus 1 times the square root of 4x plus 5, okay, plus 3. And then all divided by, if I factor out a 4, I get 4 times x minus 1. Oh, man. Oh, man. You guys see it? Do you see it? It's amazing. Look, I've got x minus 1 
times, okay, and multiplying it here, and then I've got 4 times x minus 1. Guys, look, I can divide this out. It goes away. Okay, so now look what we've got here. All right, we've got we've got the limit as x approaches 1. Uh, oh, that looks terrible. Okay, my numerator is limit as x approaches 1. Sorry. Uh, the square root of 4x plus 5 plus 3 all over just a 4. Okay, guys, I think I can plug in that 1 now. Okay, and it's not going to be indeterminate anymore. Okay, so if I get, uh, let me just plug it in. All right, hold on. All right, so we've got the square root of 4 times 1 plus 5 plus 3 all over 4. Okay, so this gives me uh, the square root of 4 plus 5, so the square root of 9 plus 3 all over 4. Okay, the square root of 9 is 3, so we get 3 plus 3 over 4. So we get 6 fourths? Wow! That's amazing! Look what we did! Oh, wait. We can simplify this. These are all divisible by 2. So I can get 3 halves. Guys, look at all, look at that. That's amazing. That is just crazy. Wow. Whew, I don't know about you. That was awesome. Oh, man, I don't even have, I don't even know what to say. Conjugates. Perfect squares, or difference of squares. Yeah, look how I wrote limit. Look how I wrote that. Isn't that cool? Okay, limit, 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 limit. I didn't take the limit yet. And then when I plugged in 1, that's when I didn't write limit anymore. Wow, that was cool. All right. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if I have the energy for 80. Let's do 80 in class. Thanks, guys. That was awesome. Whew.